Okay, so I'm going to be making three charts and they'll all have these dates here as the X axes and then these three columns here will be the Y axes. So first of all, we need the developer tab. So right click and go to customize the ribbon. Then tick the developer tab and OK. Then go to the developer tab and open up Visual Basic. Click on the name of the workbook that you're in and go to insert and insert a module. Then we'll start typing in here. Type sub add charts open and close brackets and enter and that will automatically add in the end sub at the bottom then the first thing to do is to define a couple of variables so dim i as integer and dim j as integer so now I have two variables, i and j, and they are both integers, so whole numbers. And I want i here to be the rows, and j here to be the columns. Then the next thing I'll do is to assign a value to i, with i equals, and then cells, open bracket, rows, dot, count comma i close brackets dot end open brackets xl up close brackets dot row and what this line here is doing is it's taking us on this side i'll just split screen it it's taking us on this side down to the very last cell in this worksheet and then if you do control up arrow it will take you to the first cell in this column that has a value in it and then it works out what row this cell is in so we are in row 18 in my case so i becomes equal to 18 over here the next thing i'll do is to start a for loop which will be for j is equal to 2 to 4 and I need j to go from 2 to 4 because my columns here they have to be numbered so this is column 1, column 2, column 3 and column 4 and my columns for the y-axis go from 2 to 4 so that is why I have these numbers in here. Then the first thing I'll do is make the chart. So I'll do tab with active sheet dot shapes dot add chart dot chart. So I've now made a blank chart and I need to give it a chart type. So it will be dot chart type it's equal to x, l, x, y, scatter. This is the same as if I went over here and went to insert and insert and inserted a blank scatter chart. Now the next thing I need to do is add a data series to this. So that will be dot series collection dot new series. And that will be the same as if I went over here and right click and select data and add a new series. And now I have a blank series. The next thing I'll need to do is to add values into this. So if I do this here, I want the series name to be this cell here. Then the X values, I want to be these dates. And then the Y values, at least for the first chart, are going to be these cells here. And you can see that in all of these cases, they all say equals sheet one exclamation point, And then the cell references where the numbers are coming from. Because I am in sheet one at the moment, that is the sheet name. And I'll just say OK and OK again to get out of that. And then I need to recreate that over here. 
So that will be tab with dot series collection open brackets one close brackets. So I'm making these changes to the first series in the chart, which is the series that I just made in the line above it. And the first thing I'll do is give this series a name. So that's going to be dot name is equal to then in quotation marks, I'll have the equals symbol, then and active sheet dot name, then another and and then in quotation marks and exclamation point. And the quotation marks will disappear and the and symbols are only there to combine all of the parts together. And so this will become equals sheet one exclamation point because my active sheet is sheet one down here. Then I need another and and an underscore and enter to get me onto the next line. And now I need the cell reference. So this will be cells. And then I need to put the row number in first. And for the series name, that's going to be this cell here. So it's always going to be in row one. So I can type one over here. Then for the column index, now the column is going to be variable. It's either going to be column two, three, or four. And up here, I assigned J to be equal to either two, three, or four. So I can put J in here and then close brackets and dot address and enter. The next thing I'll need to do is to give it some X values. So dot X values is equal to, and then I'm going to, uh, this error here is because there's nothing on the other side of the equals, but I'm going to copy this here, control C to copy, control V to paste, because it's going to be the same, and this will be equals sheet one exclamation point. Then for the X values, I need to put in a range and the range will be two cell references, the first cell in the range and the last one. So for the X values, that's going to be these dates here. And the first cell in this range is this one here, which is in row two. So the row number is two over here. Then the column number, it's always going to be in the first column. So this is going to be column number one and close brackets and comma. And then the next cell reference is the last cell in this range, which will be this one here. And we can see that that is in row 18. But instead of typing in 18, I already assigned I to be equal to 18 up here. So I can type in I instead. Then the column number, it's still in the first column. So this is one and close brackets and dot address and enter. And I have missed out a closed brackets there. Then I need to put in the Y values. So that's dot values and equal and then control V to paste in the line I copied before. So this is equals sheet one exclamation point. And the range this time is going to be the first cell reference. So the row here is going to be this cell here and the row is row two. So I'll type a two in here. Then the column number needs to be variable. It's either going to be the, the second column or the third column or the fourth column. So I need it to go from two to four and that is what I have J here for. So I can type in J, then close brackets and comma. And then the last cell reference here, the row number for this is going to be this cell down here, and that is in row 18. But I already said that I was equal to 18, so I can type I in here. Then for the column index, I need for this to be variable again, to be in the second column, the third column, or the fourth column. And so this can be J and close brackets and close brackets again and dot address and enter. 
And now I've put all of the data into the series. I can deselect the series by typing end with and enter. Then I'll do a backspace and I now have the chart selected, but I also need to deselect that with another end with and enter. Then I'll do one more backspace and now I will end the for loop with next J. And so this will take me back to the beginning of the for loop again and it will go through the same process. I will just delete a, some of the spaces down here and then I can save this and it needs to be a macro enabled workbook. That's the error message that I'm getting here. So I will save this spreadsheet as a macro enabled workbook by going to file and save as and changing this here to an Excel macro enabled workbook and save. Now it's saved as a macro enabled workbook. I can run macros in it. So I'll go to the developer tab and macros and you can see here the macro called add charts, which is the macro that I just made and I will run it. And initially it looks like it's only made one chart, but if I move this to the side, you can see it's actually made all of my charts. It's just put them all in the same place. And if I click on each of these, you can see the cell selection has happened correctly and it's moving along the columns in my table. Now I will delete these and run the macro again, step by step, so we can see what is happening. So if I click in here and then press F8, I can run through the macro line by line. So the first thing it does is define the variables, then calculate what I is equal to, which will be 18 in my case. Then it goes into the for loop. And the first thing it does is add in a blank scatter chart. And you can see that here. Then we'll add in a blank series. Then it will add in the name of this series, which is here, and then add in the X values down here, then the Y values, and then that chart is made, so it will loop back around to the beginning of the for loop and make the next chart, this time taking the information from the third column, from column three. It makes a blank chart, adds in a blank series of data, gives it a name, adds in the X values, the Y values, and then we loop around the for loop one final time and make another blank chart, add in a blank series of data, give the series of data a name, add in the X values, then the Y values. And now we've reached the end of the for loop, so this time it will take me to end sub, and that's the end of the macro. Now, if we have a look over here, you can change the way the chart looks if you want. So for example, I don't really need a legend in here. So if I wanted to, I could remove that. If I go back to here, I'll add in a new line, which will be dot has legend equals false and this will remove the legend from my chart. When I'm in this part here, I have the series selected. Then when I'm in this part here, I have the chart selected. So if I want to make a change to the chart, I have to put it in between the first end with and the second end with. And I'll save that change and then come back to here and run the macro one more time. And you'll see this time the charts no longer have a legend in them. Now I found this code in a post from 2014 in the Mr. Excel forum. And I've just slightly edited this to make it work for my data. If you want to edit it as well, this part here 
the i equals the number of rows should be able to adjust for a different number of rows so if your table is longer or shorter it will be able to adjust for that and then if you have more columns going along here you need to change the numbers here and if you want a different chart type you'll need to look up the different chart types to find out what it is you want there are multiple different chart types so you can just go through the list until you find the one that you want okay so in this video i have shown you how to make multiple charts using vba in excel and that is everything